I have been painting a video game. No, not painting in a video game, I've been painting a video game. Well, kind of. Nebuchadnezzar is a city building game that over the last year has really improved how it is. It's not done, I wouldn't call it finished at its current state, an update is coming, but a lot of people have sort of gained some interest in playing Nebuchadnezzar, but there's some preference differences. Now, by default, the vanilla graphics of Nebuchadnezzar look fine. There's a lot of detail, it's a realistic approach, but a lot of people do find it a little bit brown, a little bit uninteresting to look at. If you do like it, that's great. Stick with vanilla graphics, no problem. Nebuchadnezzar did launch with Steam Workshop support, so I was thinking, well, a lot of people are complaining about the graphics. Not necessarily the graphics per se, but it just looked bland to look at. So I looked at the game files and thought, okay, well, let's, let's see what I can do. And the game files are just PNG files. They're just graphic files. They're not, you know, compressed or, or hidden away or anything like that. So I, I, I'm, I'm trained. I'm, I'm a graphic designer. I'm trained in multimedia. I can do this. Uh, I have an arts background. Let me try and mod the look of Nebuchadnezzar, just from a color and tone perspective, for visual aesthetics and also for functionality. Also, thank you to those of you who have been directly supporting this channel through Patreon, becoming YouTube members, or subscribing on Twitch or any other direct monetary support for this channel. Because of you guys, I can spend my time going out and creating unique, interesting things like this without worrying about having to be paid for it. So thank you. So I opened up Photoshop and started modifying the files, changing the colors, boosting the vibrance, and making certain buildings clearer than others. So for example, you want fire stations to look nice, bright red, so you can see them at a glance and they don't blend in. I've changed the color of wells so that the water goes from brown to blue, because that's that, that makes it stand out more, not necessarily from a realistic point of view. Because in real life, I mean, water is generally kind of brown. I mean, it, it's vanilla Nebuchadnezzar graphics are actually kind of realistic. But let's make the water blue, teal, green sort of color and see what it looks like. Let's boost up the greens of the grass and all of that. And I started doing this and I was like, okay, this looks great. Now, how do I make a Steam Workshop mod so I can share this with you guys? And that was a little bit trickier. The, the mods take these Lua files, I've never worked with Lua before, and I didn't know how to actually implement the new graphics I've made, or the modified graphics I've made, into an actual toggleable mod. That was more complicated. I did ask the developers on their Discord for a little bit of guidance, and I figured it out. Turns out the way the game normally loads its own graphics is like a mod, so I could copy-paste a lot of files. Ah, the true sign of a programmer. Control c Control v That's how we do it. All my programming training led me to that. <laughs> anyway, so I figured out how to make Steam Workshop mods to share with you guys, and now I've, I've basically got a graphics overhaul collection on the Nebuchadnezzar Steam Workshop which you can find with the link down below. If you do check it out and you do like it, remember to like it. I, I don't I don't actually know how Steam works as a social media platform, but if you like it enough, it gets a star rating, I think. Um, so thank you for rating it. And th let's see what you guys think of the new graphic style. I I'm, I'm very happy with it. I really like the way I've made the game look. And if I play Nebuchadnezzar, I'll most likely be using these graphics mods. And the nice thing of it being a collection of nine different mods is if you don't like one of the changes, like you like everything, but you want the water to be brown, it's easy. You can just subscribe to the whole collection and then in the game, there's a mods page where you turn on and off the mods you like or don't like. It's easy. So in this video, I'm just gonna go through the mods I've made so far and some of the details because it's not just the color mods. I've actually fixed a couple mistakes as well, which I found in my modding. And let me bring you through what we've got. I've got side-by-side -side comparisons as well, so you can see what we're talking about. Okay, so the first mod I uploaded was Gamerzak's Blue Fish. <laughs> this was a test to see if I could actually mod an animation in the game. So the way the animations work is that they're just frame-by-frame -frame animations running at 60 frames a second. So a one-second animation has 60 PNG files. 
So I reminded myself how to do batch processing in Photoshop, and I actually did this all live, by the way. If you we, we do this sort of thing live on Twitch once in a while, so if you want to see bonus things like this, you can follow on Twitch. They're, they're not really it's not really YouTube content videos sort of thing, but we do this live because I thought, hey, maybe people would like to see me figure out how to make a Steam Workshop mod question mark. And so that's over at Twitch if you want to follow there. But for the blue fish, I, I just had this issue where I looked at the water and I was wondering, is that fish there? Because the fish are brown and the water's brown. But also the fish in the warehouses are blue. So I'm like, well, let's make the fish blue. And I made the fish blue and made it a mod and now you can download it. So I think that looks pretty good. Pretty simple uh, change, very small change. But this is also not just for aesthetics. This is about the color communication. Uh, when it comes to a game like this. Color recognition, color coding, uh, however you want to phrase it. But basically the fish in the warehouse are blue, so it makes sense to make the fish in the river blue because then as you look at your city you can re see at a glance, okay, those fish in the water are blue, we're fishing them out and they're going into the warehouse and that's blue, and then the cart pushers are wearing blue and then they go to the market and it's blue, so it sort of creates this coherent color code for fish being blue. Now, uh, the, the color coding for this game is sort of all over the place. There's some things that sort of make sense, but then it's like, you know, bakeries have red and white tarps, but then so do warehouses and wells, and that sort of implies they have something to do with each other, but they don't. It, it gets rather confusing, and I, I might want to work on the color coding of this game a bit more in the future as we continue to create these mods and I add to this collection. But anyway, let's move on from the blue fish. The next mod I put up was Gamer's Axe Popping Goods, and it's a simple mod. It makes uh, the goods stored in warehouses pop with a bit more color, more distinct color as well. You know, I'm, I'm not just boosting, importantly, I'm not just boosting the saturation of uh, the graphics, right? Yeah, that, that's a bad way to do it. That makes it very noisy color-wise. So for example, the fish in storehouses, I don't just boost the saturation, I boost the blue. So the fish stand out. So the, the baskets aren't, the baskets under the fish aren't the focus here. The fish are the focus. And a big notable one here, I think, is the tablets. Tablets were sort of a pale brown and warehouses store them on a pale brown floor. So they were very hard to see. So I specifically made those darker, more contrasting, and they stand out more. And people seem to really like this one. So this, again, I think it looks nice, but also there's this function behind it. There's a functional thing. Uh, notably, I made the milk pure white. <laughs> the, the milk was kind of slightly blue before, and I, I get how the milk can look a little bit blue, um, but just for visual communication purposes, I wanted that pure white so that, you know, when you sell milk in a market in this game, it adds a white tint. So I made the milk match the color of that tint, which was pretty close to pure white. Now, a note on this one is that these mods they replace the, the uncarpeted version. This game has a carpet option in the settings menu, but the way it implements a lot of these settings is they aren't overlays or underlays. They're entire graphics replacers. Same with the grid on the ground. When you go into the settings options in the game and turn on either the carpets or the terrain grid, it actually replaces the entire resource graphic or it replaces the entire terrain graphic. It's not an overlay. So these mods for now are without these over and underlays. So the goods are without the carpets underneath and the terrain is going to be without the grids. Okay, next mod, it's a subtle one, but this one is sort of so that the farms match the rest of the new graphics. But also I think it kind of makes them look nicer. It's just a nice little contrasting color boost to farms and to the crops. Uh, not the goats, but but the farm buildings, the, the animal farm and the plant farm buildings, and the, the uh, crop tiles. It's just a very subtle color boost which helps it match the rest of the mod. By the way, these screenshots of before and after I'm showing for each of these mods, it's with only that particular mod turned on, not with all the other mods. So you know, the, the farms might look a little bit saturated in the after here for the, the compared to everything else, but with all the other mods that I've made, it makes sense. So this one's just a nice little crop uh, color enhancement, uh, particularly on the flax, because that's sort of a blue sort of color, and I wanted that to pop a little bit more. 
Okay, next mod is probably one of the biggest ones which people are either gonna love or they, they just don't like it. It's my vibrant rivers and greener grass. So this is a very clear change. I don't know if you need a before and after for this, but it makes the water a lot. There's three types of water in the game. There's a blue, there's a sort of teal color, and then there's a slightly greener one. So this one changes the color of water to a more vibrant color. And it also, just so that the coasts don't look so pale in comparison to the water, it also changes the color of the grass to be greener and the foliage of the trees, the natural trees, to be greener. Not the parks, by the way, just the natural trees and the natural and the grass in general. So this is sort of a couple things in one, and it, I think it really just does have the biggest effect on how this game looks. And I really like it. Uh, you might like it. After that, an aesthetic and primarily functional mod, it's my repainted services. This one is just for three buildings. The healer, the fire station, and the police station. These three buildings are important, uh, essential services in your city, and I found it very difficult to see them before I boosted their colors. Healers often just completely disappeared amongst the houses and other parks and trees you planted. Firehouses were a pale red, but still very brown, almost sandy color, so they blended in. And the police station already doesn't have that much blue on it. So it, it really was hard to see these three important structures at a glance. So I made this, and it boosts their colors a little bit more than the rest of the mods, just to make them really pop as you look at, the, at your city. And you can spot, okay, there's the fire stations, there's the police stations, and oh, there's the healers. Because the healer buildings are already small, they're half the size of a house. So, so this, I find, really helps. It also sort of helps boost the color coding, where fire stations are red, police stations are blue, and healers, healing buildings specifically, are red and green. And that does carry over to how I modded the hospital graphic, but we'll get to that in a bit. And then here's a mod that I made which really does just brighten up the whole game. It's the Warm Sand and Stone. Warm Sand and Stone because I actually made a first mod before this, which was slightly whiter, but it did feel kind of beachy. It, it felt kind of like a tropical sandy beach with the, the water mod I made. That's still available, but I decided to tone it down slightly and make it warmer, and this like, it, it feels like the sun has risen on ancient Mesopotamia. It felt very cloudy before. Uh, and this sort of just brings out the sun and makes the sand and stone brighter. And some people feel like this is still too bright. I might make a darker version so it's somewhat between vanilla and this. But right now I've been playing with the my modded warm sand and stone mod. And I actually kind of like how bright it is. I, like, after you know, long times, long hours of playing it or just messing around and looking at cities, looking at landscapes. I don't think it's too bright. It might be too bright for you, but uh, I like it. And then the next mod, it's a subtle one, uh, just to, similar to the farm mod, just to bring up the vibrancy of your city. It's lush parks and trees. Now, lush, lush parks and trees just takes all of the park buildings, the grass you can plant, the trees you can plant, the little park buildings, and it just boosts up the vibrancy of those things, so that when you actually start decorating your city, they really do pop out of the desert a bit more. They're, they're not like slightly covered with sand. They're like clean, vibrant, lushy trees and foliage, and it's nice. I like it. Uh, and it looks, uh, it, might, it might look a little bit much against vanilla sand here, but if you try it on, on my modded warm sand, uh, then it, it looks really nice. And then for an aesthetic and very functional mod, I made Clearer Color Industries. This one takes all the industry buildings and either boosts up their, their primary color or replaces some colors entirely. So, for example, on breweries, we boost up the yellow. On butchers, we boost up the red. This makes uh, looking at your city and identifying the industries a little bit easier. And then some buildings have quite a significant change. So for example, wells, the water is turned to blue because I actually struggled looking at wells before. You could have a row of bakeries and then a well and the well kind of blended into bakeries, especially because the tarp on the well has the same colors as bakeries, right? It's got the red and white tarp and that 
That made them really blend in, but now with the three pools of blue water, it stands out. The caravanserai was a tricky one. I changed the water in the middle that the donkeys are drinking to blue. And the donkeys are animated, so I had to change the color around that. And also like fishing piers, the tarp was white before, I made it blue to match the blue fish and also the, the fish now stored in the warehouse. So this sort of boosts up all of these colors, you know, the, the observatory has a bit more of a striking blue, but it's a different blue from the fish, you know, and a different blue from the, the water, importantly. And I find this really helpful. In this, I also fix certain weird graphical oddities that I found. So for example, the, the ripple on the well water didn't disappear correctly. It sort of reached an end and then it just popped out, right? So now in the modded version, I fade that off so that the water ripples a bit more naturally. And also, uh, just an odd thing, I found breweries to be like five pixels too low and wineries to be 10 pixels too high. It was kind of weird. Uh, easy to, to overlook this when creating these graphics, but in this mod, I fix those as well. I align all of the industries so that they, they display correctly and nothing looks too weirdly off when they're next to each other. And finally, now that the rest of the city has been overhauled, I made a brighter homes mod. So one thing that I kind of didn't like in vanilla was that particularly with the uh, second tier housing and uh, then for the third tier housing, it, it still looked rather dirty, right? It, it, it didn't look clean enough for the middle class. So in this mod, I brightened all the homes up a little bit. I significantly whitened the, the tier two housing and made the tier three housing, the, the big aristocrat housing, really shine, right? So this matches all the other mods quite nicely. And also, I sort of reinforce a color code here where white implies housing. And of course, you know, the peasant tier one housing, they they can't afford white walls. They're, they're dirty walls covered in sand and mud and all of that. So obviously they're not gonna have white walls, but they have these little tarps across them. So what I did was I took all of those tarps and made those particularly whiter so that they're like looking at the higher class housing with their white walls and it's like, oh, I wish we could have white walls, but they put up a white tarp instead because they can afford that. But it also helps communicate to the player that, okay, white implies housing. The only other place where white appears in the game is for milk and that's, uh, well, sort of checks out. That's sort of a pure white, um, but also hopefully that doesn't cause too much confusion. I, I didn't make the tarps on the tier one housing the pure white, like a market selling milk. So it shouldn't cause too much confusion and it should still help your houses stand out a bit more. And particularly the middle class housing, I think looks way better and it really pops against uh, the new lush gardens and stuff like that. Okay, and that is my Nebuchadnezzar color collection. Nine mods which you can download at a click of a button. And remember, if you do like it, thumbs it up. The collection and all the individual mods. Just so they can get some ratings and I can get some feedback on what people prefer, what people like. The more feedback I get, the more I know which direction to mod. You know, you can leave comments as well if you like and tell me what you think. And I do hope that people who want to play Nebuchadnezzar but wanted a bit more color, a bit more eye candy to look at, uh, will appreciate this mod and it's super easy. I've made it super easy for you, okay? I put in a lot of work. Th those Lua script files are confusing, but I figured it out and I did it for you and you can now have at it. Uh, the links will be down below. I'll be making more, so keep an eye on the collection or just any other mods I make on the Steam Workshop. And if you'd like to directly support my efforts at doing this, you can support on Patreon. Gamerzak.com slash Patreon is a great way to support the channel. And if you support at the higher tiers there, you actually get merch sent to you once in a while. So thank you so much for that. And enjoy the merch if you do become a patron. Direct support like that does help me keep ads at a lower rate on these videos. And it gives me the freedom to create stuff like this, right? Making these mods, I don't make any money if people thumbs it up on Steam Workshop. I don't make any money from that. People can send me these, what are these, awards? so that they can send me a golden unicorn and I get 800 steam points. I don't even know what that is. Like, that does not pay the rent. 
So direct support from you guys, either like subscribing on Twitch, becoming YouTube members or supporting directly on Patreon. It helps me go do things like this where, you know, the platforms aren't going to pay me, but it's still a worthwhile endeavor. I think people seem to be liking these mods. Hope you do too. All right, that's it for now. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.